Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to be talking about a low to mid priced string library that really delivers uh, quality above its price point. If that's something which doesn't interest you, then can I recommend this video all about sweet kittens? But the video about sweet kittens won't improve your music and this library just might. What I'm talking about is Cinematic Studio Strings. It's from um, an Australian developer. This is the latest incarnation of the product which over the course of time has gradually been getting more and more sophisticated and if anything easier and easier to use. So let's have a look at um, what it looks and of course more importantly sounds like. The interface is very straightforward. What you get is um, each section, um, violin, one, two, viola, cello and bass, plus you get um, a full ensemble patch and a light ensemble patch. Now I've got all the um, instruments loaded up in one instance of contact here and it's using, as you can probably just see up there, uh, 3.66 gigabytes. So that, if you load the whole library up, that's um, the footprint, which is not half bad, frankly, and of course you can purge and do all those kind of things as well. Um, the interface is very straightforward. Uh, you get, these are, the, these are your articulations, um, so it's, it, if you switch the legato on and off, you get, a, it's a, a diff, um, it changes between um, legato, which uh, sounds like this. If you switch it to advanced mode, you may see you've got standard and advanced here. If you switch it to advanced, you get um, slow as well as medium and fast. Now the speed of um, the legato speed is um, velocity dependent and all the dynamics controlled um, on uh, the mod wheel down there. Now, where this sound is coming from, I think this is really important, and this is why you can see little things flicking around at the bottom here. Um, it was recorded here at Track Down in Sydney, and you can see this is a um, traditional film scoring stage, and I really like the sound of libraries recorded on scoring stages, because it's <coughs> closer to the sound I'm likely to get when I'm lucky enough to work with uh, live players. Um, as you can see, it's a decent sized uh, recording studio. Um, I would guess from the sound that it's, um, it's hard to place how many, how many players we're hearing here, but uh, let's just play the staccato and then you can hear a bit more of the space. Because notice we're, we're not using any reverb here, this is just the sound of the room. So it's, it's, it's got a natural ambience and a warmth to the room, but it's not too long. So. So I, I'm hearing something which is a little bit bigger than a normal chamber size orchestra. It's about the size which a lot of people in film scoring will, would um, have access to. So it's not the full symphonic orchestra, but it's not a small chamber um, section as well. And that's another thing I really like. Um, if You may also notice on these staccatos here, the mod wheel takes you through from spiccato to staccatissimo to staccato ooh, to sforzando. Tremolando is, oh, let's turn the legato off, then you'll get um, And notice, when, as soon as you go to um, a polyphonic patch, you get um, very simple control over attack and release. Likewise, harmonics. If you wanted to change um, patch, you can see the, um, the key switches are very straightforward there, um, starting at C0, um, and going up, um, there's um, the staccato there, etc. So you can also control it using CC. Um, for those of you who are into the big touchscreen thing, you can program all of these on, uh, what is it, CC58, and give them different values. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably haven't got the great big touchscreen thing and haven't spent six years of your life trying to work out how to program it. But nonetheless, what you're also getting is They've done, um, as a number of libraries do, um, a mix, basically. So um, if you want to take, thi take you know, things into your own hands, you can go in there and you can turn on all these um, the close main and room mics, and you can route them all out um, to different outputs. And it comes with a built-in uh, reverb. Uh, wah, wah, what did I just do? 
which is perfectly acceptable. You know, a lot of you may choose to, to run it dry and then add your own reverb later in the thing, and that's completely fine. Um, it's, the trills are interesting. You have to play two notes at once. So either you play a, a minor second like this, or a major second like that, and it does it. So that, and you've got, therefore, you've got control of volume on the mod wheel. OK, um, there's a Mark Alto patch. Like all of these, you can turn on Consordino, which is basically a sophisticated filter. Um, so it's not an actual recording of Consordino, um, uh, but it's perfectly efficient. And uh, here we go, here's the pizzicato, which again on the mod wheel goes through Bartok and Colleno. This is quite interesting. This is measured trem which I've got turned on as sync to host. You just get two notes. Um, da -dum, so you Which I quite like. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's just... Um, I'll come on to the ensembles in a minute. Um, why don't we just do something and see how it shapes up? Um, let me see. So, okay, if we're going to start this malarkey, we better start with the violas. Uh, I'm going to do some viola. Where are they? There we go. Let's have some measured trims with the violas. So we're looking at a, a key switch of a D0. That's right. Okay, now I sync it to host. Yeah, you can instantly hear the difference. Okay, um, let's. Uh, I'm going to move the, this window out of the way and get into my editor there. Um, let's have uh, sort that out. Let's loop that. I'm, going to, I'm just doing something very quickly because I thought actually you can see a thousand and one um, reviews of things like this, but actually trying to write something for a couple of minutes might be more helpful. Um, so you actually see it in action, so to speak. Um, okay, where are we going to stick that? There. Okay, let's go for some, let's bring our thing back. What are we going to do with the violin ones? I want, to, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with, uh, I can add, actually, I can add some reverb into all this, actually, maybe because you normally would, so let's not leave it completely dry like that. Uh, let's, with the them, go for harmonics, maybe. OK, enough faffing about now. Let's do it. OK. Uh, now, I tell you what, let's get the, um, before we do anything else, actually, first of all, I'm going to add some reverb to that. Um, let's try some ensemble strings. Okay, let's bring some of those in. So here is another, oh, another interesting thing. You actually do have quite a lot of control over this. Look, you've got, you can control portamento velocity, blah, 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 blah. Vibrato crossfades, so you can put that on CC2 which I have, so therefore you can get... Now that's something until Hollywood Strings came along you couldn't do. So that's quite a sophisticated um, piece of kit to have on a, a relatively straightforward library, frankly. Okay, so what I'm going to go with for this is, let's try some of these... Um, ah, it's an octave lower, isn't it? So uh, what are we going to go for? How about some...
Okay. Um, now let's put some uh, other little lines around. I mean, this is very, very quick, just to give you some idea. Uh, I'll tell you what, shall I... I'm just going to add in some reverb here, some uh, external reverb, because I think most people... I like to use a lexicon finishing reverb. Okay. So we're going with a... I'm going to try feed... And a little answering phrase in the celli. I know the celli are actually really in the ensemble thing. And this is something which drives orchestrators mad when people write for four string orchestras all at the same time. Okay, so we're going to do the same. should have taken that out. Sorry. Look, I'm, I mean, I think you're starting to hear, and I'm, this is with no faffing and very little practice with this library, um, that it has the potential to sound really good. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do with this, looking inside here, is take all these velocities down so that we get a slightly slower uh, legato transition. Let's have a look at this. The, I've only, I'm using second violins. So look, um, this is a $400 library. There are offers on quite a lot, but it's the, the headline price is $400. You're getting an awful lot of bang for your buck for $400, to be honest. Um, it does a, the user interface is beautiful, really, really clear, and surprisingly powerful. Um, and they've done a really, really good job with that. Um, the choice of articulations is everything you really need is there. I mean, it's obviously a lot more limited than the really big libraries. Um, but it's one of it, you know, part of its joy is its simplicity. And for people, particularly people who um, are coming to um, music technology sample mock-ups you know, seriously for the first time, this w is, a, is a really, really good place to start. I would say, it, does it compete head-to-head -head with things like Spitfire? Uh, 8DO even, probably, I mean, f at the really top end, probably not, because there are just broader range of articulations, more players, um, and you know, it's slightly more sophisticated. But, you know, th that's really not what it's pitching at. Um, and I, to be honest, and I've got all those libraries, and, I would still, and I'm still finding this has now found a place in my, uh, in my uh, template because it does things which uh, either the others don't do quite so well or it just does them differently. The legatos are really lovely. The legatos are very, very nice um, in particular. Um, downsides, um, I really like the sound. There's sometimes it just sounds a little tiny bit processed to me, but I mean, it's... And, and probably I might prefer one or two more players, but it's... I mean, that's really picky, because I mean, what it sounds, it sounds gorgeous. It sounds absolutely gorgeous. And for the money, it's um, extraordinary value and a, a really great addition to anybody's template, whether you've got a huge template or whether you're just starting out. So if it takes on anything head to head, it'll be more things probably like cine strings from cine samples, which is also recorded in a um, scoring stage like this. Um, and this 
for me, does a much better job. I'm much happier using um, Cinematic Studio strings. Um, so yes, Cinematic Studio strings absolutely finds a place in my template. Um, at its best, it sounds as good as any string library out there. And for those certainly just getting going, it offers a really great value. So that's all I have for you today. If you uh, want to download my um, free guide to getting started in uh, writing film music, then all you have to do is uh, click the link and it will fly to an inbox uh, near you. Thanks very much for watching. See you again next time.